Last Generation Network News, where we do news abuse. It's a topical series that we're going to consistently bring up certain topics, for instance, global warming, in which someone, somewhere, at some point in time, has taken the news and abused it because they have created a false sense of what's really happening in the world, and they have gone and decided that because of political reasons or because of the social consequence of what we do with the reality of why we don't want to believe in global warming, we decide to call it something else, climate change. We call it normal actions of the world deteriorating. We can call it anything that you want to call it. But here's what's happened, is that a lot of times people will do things to use the news and they abuse the views. In other words, they change what's really happening in the world into something political so that they can get points. They feel like they're scoring some political value by running stories about global warming. Let's don't call it global warming. Let's call it something else. Because I know if I bring up global warming, I automatically have every Christian in the world coming down on me and telling me, I don't know what I'm talking about. Because they've read some story, they looked at some video, they watched somebody post, after all, from all these news services, some story about an expose about a scientist who got paid in order to do something. Let's be real. First of all, there are no scientists that work for free. Second of all, one of the ways that you tell whether or not a story is valid is you find out who paid for it because everybody pays for something to get put on the news. Every news story that's on the news, somebody paid to have it on there. Commercial support, you name it, science, you know, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Special interest groups, even Christians pay to have their news stories put on. It gets to be ridiculous after a while, so let's call it something else. Let's don't call it global warming. Let's call it climate observations. And we'll take the politics right out of it, okay? Let's just look at the news for a minute. And let's just uh, do what I like to call get our ducks in a row. Let's just put the facts with the reality with the truth and with the point of view of someone who has seen it, who has heard it, and who has been there. Me. So we actually have an eyewitness account right here in me on this story. We're going to call it Climate Observation. Now I don't know about you, but Frankly, I'm standing here in the year 2012, and I'm looking at climate observations, and I'm saying, La Nina. Yeah, La Nina. Because you see, I want to show you something so that just wait right there. Don't go anywhere. Don't change that dial. <laughs> don't change that channel. But I want to show you something about climate observations. This is what we call demonstrative proof. If you can smell it, if you can see it, if you can touch it, if you can taste it, if you can hold it in your own hands, if you've heard it, then you can prove to yourself in February you have a daffodil growing in the middle of an area that should not be growing daffodils in February. Sometimes it has happened in the past. Sometimes it will happen in the future, but not on a consistent basis unless it's consistently happening on a regular basis. So right now we have a climate, as you can tell, observation. We have a plant growing early. Does that mean it's global warming? Of course not. It means there's a plant growing. That's all it means. But you see, if a, someone came along and wanted to make a story out of it, they would say, oh, guess what? Michael discovered plants growing out of season. Oh my God, the world's coming to an end because it's warming up. 
No. I'm living in an area that sometimes it happens. But the point is this. There are climate changes going on. We can observe them and see that. We have earthquakes, we have floods, we have changes in the seasons, we have different varieties of climate changes happening in dramatic ways throughout the world. That's what we call a sign of the times. Now, to put it bluntly, a sign of the times is minor. It's not a big deal. It's going to happen. It's like the first time you get a birth pang. Oh, wow. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm trying to make a belly. Oh, I, I got a gas pain and it felt like a birth pang. Does that mean that the baby's coming? Uh, maybe if you thought it was your first baby, you might have thought so, but by the time you've had two or three babies, that first gas pain, you know, where it feels kind of uncomfortable and you go, you know, and it's like, oh, I feel so much better now. Guess what? It was a sign of the time, but it was minor. It's a sign that you're prego, but guess what? It ain't delivery. So don't go bonkers just because something, an earthquake, 5.2, 6.2, 4.1, 3.8, hike, has happened in the world. Climate observation. That's another thing that we're trying to get people to quit overreacting with the signs of the time so that you will admit the climate has changed. It has dramatically changed. We have at least a point something like zero one increase in water level in the ocean. It has gone up that much. Now, here's the point. Is it a big deal? No, it's minor. It's a sign of the times. The ice caps are melting. Oh my God, the ice caps are melting. Oh, wait a minute. Let's get our ducks in a row. Or let's take them out of context. If I started to say, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, then you would know that I was talking about Chicken Little. Because I would take out of context, the sky is falling, or the sea level is rising, and the ice caps are melting, and I'd say, oh, it's a sign of the time, it's a sign of the time. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. We gotta prove it's not a sign of the time. We gotta prove it's not happening, that it's not climate warming. Because after all, we know that you know those guys that aren't Christians were telling us that the climate's warming up, but it's not really happening. Because we're Christians and we know better. Or, can I say this? The Christians may be the ones that are manipulating you to not believe in it because it also is a political football that they too are using it for gain, for politics, for a reason you may not know of because of carbons or whatever it may be and trying to manipulate this political idea, trying to blame man for causing climate observations. The fact that, yes, the ocean went up some. Who cares? People that are below sea level care, people at sea level care, but you don't care because guess what? Point zero 0.01, you're not even gonna worry about it because by the time it goes up, you're going to, dare I say something with common sense around here about news abuse? Hey, if the water rises, you go to higher ground. You quit living on the edge of the ocean, you move up. It's not going to be a disaster. It's happening too slow. Jeez. So now, let's get to point two. We do know that the water level in the oceans have risen. Let's talk about my favorite subject. Alaska. Now, someone's going to say, but what do you mean Alaska? You just had a big snowstorm. Uh, duh. But let me mention something else here about Alaska that's pretty famous that we all know about in Alaska, if you're an Alaskan. We call it tundra. Guess what? The tundra's melting. Ooh. Almost everything up there is tundra, most of the time. 
frozen ground, solid, spongy when it warms up a little bit on top surface. But what happens when the tundra melts is that it releases CO2. In other words, there is a huge amount of changes going to happen, climate observations, whether it's warming up or not, because the tundra is melting. What's causing it? We could proclaim that we think that there's a volcanic activity underneath the tundra and that for millions of miles underneath Alaska, which is one-third the size of the United States, in case you didn't know, that most of that tundra that you know is frozen is being caused by volcanic activity. No, it's not. It's being caused because it's warm up there. It's getting warmer. Now you could go with an earth tilt, you know, and try to make that into some kind of you know climactic environmental change that's going to make it ooh weirdo. But let me speak for an eyewitness account so that we can get over with this news abuse and we can get to the reality of facts between you and I. I live there. I spent ten years of my life in Alaska. I watched the winters get milder and milder and milder and milder. We didn't keep track of every year how much snowfall or if it was an extra foot or less a foot. It was obvious because when you get 30 feet of snow in some of the places I lived and suddenly you're getting like 20 feet, you notice a 10 foot drop. Trust me because you know some of the houses that we had built in a place called Hyder, Alaska had doors on the top. And when they didn't, you know, like a uh, snowpack didn't like ground level go up that high, you kind of knew that first step was, whoa, baby, what a shock. Or like when you lived farther north, like I lived in Nome, Alaska, you begin to recognize that, hey, you know what, Bering Sea isn't quite so solid this time, you know, and man, there seems to be something going on here that, you know, it's kind of like, I kind of noticed a lot less of those blasting winds coming across the snow, you know, and having the goggles on and the hoodies, you know, and having the gloves on, you know, and the gloves underneath the gloves, you know, and the foot gear, you know, walking out on the Bering Sea to go check out the forest that we build <laughs> whenever it's, you know, snow covered. <laughs> We put out one tree out there and we call it Gnome Forest. The point is, as an Alaskan who lived there, and everyone in the Northern Hemisphere knows, it's melting. It is opening up. You have to admit to yourself, based upon climate observations, that somewhere along the way, things are changing. What that changes is not global warming, because it's not warming the globe, the globe mean temperature of the internal systematic environmental impact of how the earth, you know, dissipates and radiates and receives and gives off heat hasn't changed. What's happening is that there are changes going on that are we can make climate observations about but it doesn't mean it's global warming, like suddenly the earth is going to catch fire and, you know, like burn us up. If it increases one degree or two degrees, then it does cause that kind of stuff in Alaska. So there's a fact that I'm getting tired of having to argue with Christians and non-Christians about. It is a fact that climate has changed. It is not a fact that global warming is going to cause a disaster. It is warming. The earth is warming. There is no doubt about it. You don't have to have a popular science degree. You don't have to go out and try to prove or disprove somebody who's trying to prove or disprove it for whatever political reason. You can do your own homework. 33 lakes dried up in Alaska that a student took some satellite images from years in the past to present and couldn't find the lakes anymore. They dried up. These are big lakes dried up in the tundra in the middle of nowhere. In Siberia, same thing. They're experiencing these outrageous differences where they're able to now, oh boy, we can do some archaeology and discover, you know, more mammoths and more of these, you know, uh, animals that have lived, you know, in the past because the ice isn't so thick anymore. Canada has begun to work on having a free trade or an ice-free shipping route through the Hudson Bay because it doesn't freeze over anymore. All you have to do is put the pieces together and begin to look at and say, well now wait a minute, let me go back 10 years and could you have even imagined in the dead of winter passing through the Hudson Bay? Isn't that where Hudson died, you know, because of his boat, you know, getting stuck in the ice? Mm-hmm. Now so, let me get this right. 
if I go back to a satellite image of 10 years ago and I look at it and it's all frozen over and then I look at a modern day satellite you know, image and I see that there's been some changes and that there's some open fresh water, do we have a problem, Houston? Mm -hmm. So if we go to Antarctica, shouldn't we be able to see that there's some differences in the Antarctic ice shelf, you know, that maybe it's beginning to break up some and that there's underneath water that's beginning to be discovered that's even bigger or that some of the ice shells are beginning to shelve off at a different and higher rate? Uh-huh. Is that happening all over the northern hemisphere too with all the different countries that are up above the Arctic Circle where all the the, the um, glaciers are beginning to calve off and they're also beginning to recede in a consistent basis that seems to be maybe not super fast but faster than before? Uh-huh. Well, wait a minute. So are you trying to tell me that I need to panic and I need to worry and I need to be afraid of all these things because, you know, they're after all, that's what the climate change people or the climate warming people are telling me that I need to be afraid and I need to do this carbon thing? No. Because you see, it's going to happen. These things are already happening. It's been going on for so long now that there is nothing to change. The Kyoto treaties, the President Obama's and all these different people that are trying to get together for this carbon emission control situation where they're trying to pretend like carbon emissions is causing it. They don't know. They really don't. They aren't preparing to observe the climate and decide to move out of, like, say, if you're on the ocean, you know, move away from the coast, you know, because it's a little bit, you know, maybe in a hundred years it's going to raise up three inches or one inch, maybe two inches. You see, blowing it out of proportion is what politics has done. But then the Christian has reacted by blowing it out of proportion to fight against the politics. The facts still remain. There are some things that are happening that affect you and I. And they are minor as far as the sign of the times are concerned, but they are a part of prophecy. That's why we bring it up. We don't want you to be deceived by getting involved in the political process of throwing back and forth this carbon dating or carbon credits or trying to save CO2 emissions because guess what? The tundra is going to put out more CO2 than man ever made or invented since time began. Because once that tundra melts, it explodes with carbon. You'll have it all over the place. And you'll also have growth from other plants that are going to grow up and probably use the CO2. So part of what people are doing, you know, is that they're not really taking the big picture. The world. The world is changing. We know that by prophecy. We know that the end times are coming. We know we live in the last days. We know we're the last generation. Don't get caught up in the political scheming of two parties that don't really believe in last generation. They don't believe we live in the last days. Don't deny the fact that the world is changing. Don't deny the fact that the world is warming up. Be realizing that if they do tell you that, hey, you know, polar bears are having a hard time. Yeah, they are, sort of, but they adapt, you know. I mean, they do have a hard time because they're not living on ice, but guess what? They swim. They'll be okay. <laughs> Trust me, they will adapt. God works it out that way. He created them. The point being is they don't evolve, but God takes care of them. And so it's not a question of saving wolves like some people for some reason, you know, want to save every wolf alive, you know, and shoot up in Alaska, you know, and wolves are liable to kill you, you know. But recognize that in just this one story in news abuse, you have two warring factors. Some people who are anti whatever it may be, and some people that are pro. Don't let either one of these pull you away from the pure truth of the Word of God, of what it says is happening in these latter days. Don't let one side take your duck out of order so that you don't have your ducks in a row, which simply means that you've got all your facts in order. It means that you've kind of got it in, straightened out in your mind. You kind of got it figured out. You put all the facts together. You examine the truth. You examine both sides of the argument. You didn't pay attention to them because they were politically based anyways. But you went out and you talked to some people who have no politics on either side. doesn't really care. And you wanted to find out what the truth is, which was narrow. And the narrow way is that we are doing climate observations. We are seeing these things happen. If I stick my head in the sand and pretend like we don't have climate change, I could tell you that that daffodil didn't bloom. I could tell you that the earth is staying the same. I could tell you that it's snowing on the east coast and it's warm on the west coast so we can say, oh, there's no climate change because after all, in New York, they feel like they're cold. And Europe is getting through this pounced on 
weather system that's kind of warped its way around because of the jet stream that's pushing it from up above, down below, and making its Arctic blasts come down through the European continent. And oh no, that means it's not. There's no such thing as climate warming because after all, we're looking at the news stories and we can see snow. Sure, and I can see a daffodil. So what's that tell you? It tells you you need to prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. It's not about global warming because of carbon. It's about global warming because it's happening. It is happening around the world. Whenever you want to know about the differences of the why it happens in certain countries and certain areas, all you have to do is look at the wind patterns and see how they shift and they change because of the streams that they talk about of air that we know that is caused by the jet stream, the streams likewise that are in the ocean that God called in the book of Psalms and in Proverbs, if I remember right, I think it's in Job also, the pathways in the ocean, that you have set up pathways in the ocean and in the air. The pathways is the same word that's used for streams, for jet streams, for the air, for the, what's happening in the ocean, for El Nino when it happens and it causes weather to go funky throughout the United States because it happens here in California and goes whoosh, all the way across the country. And everybody goes, well, what's happening? And I say, well, you know what? In about three days, it's going to hit New York. <laughs> and sure enough, it follows right over there because you look at the jet stream and you can see where it's going to go. Shoot. No big deal. It blows over us and goes over there. You see the mountains? They get rained on. It gets dumped on. It goes on to the next. It's common sense stuff. Use your God-given ability to not be abused by the news, but begin to use some common sense so that you don't take something like global warming and make it into something it's not. It's not a political football. It's not something somebody made up. It's not something that somebody paid to have someone else get credits from. It's not one of uh, Alan Gore's or Mr. Gore's, the ex-vice president's movie that he wants to somehow get some money out of. No, it's not about that at all. They're going to try to use it they're going to take what seems to be a fact and distort it. They're going to take, as it were, the truth and change it into the image they want it to portray. They will take a fact and distort it the same way that you take facts and distort it when you're telling a story. Global warming, the cause, is a story. Global warming, the fact, is reality that the news is, yes, it's happening. The views are, Will you adjust your lifestyle accordingly? Will you plan out wherever you are, like say you're living next to the ocean to move? Well, I don't think you have to move right away. <laughs> I think you don't even have to worry about it because I think the Lord will return before then. But the reality is that each and every time that we hear these stories that have been blown out of proportion become a football to throw back and forth and back and forth, and then they hide, as it were, prophecy. They hide, as it were, the facts then you set yourself up to be deceived. So we want to bring out every chance we can certain topics like global warming and say to you, let's stop the abuse. Let's show the news and the reality of the facts as they are so that you will stop reacting and start acting upon facts. Not reacting from these people over here who say there's absolutely no such thing as global warming. Really? I just saw it. I just heard it. I just handled it with my own hands. Or these people over here who say, there is global warming and guess what? It's going to end life as we know it. All the, the earthquakes and are going to happen and all the, the, the seas are going to rise and people are going to die and there's going to be flooding and devastation. Really? How long is it going to take for the seas to rise? 50 years? 100 years? You think you could move by then? You think you could like pick up and kind of move before then? Or are you going to wait until you need a rowboat that's only going to raise... Wait a minute. In 50 years it's going to raise how much? An inch? Two inches? You get the point? They're right and so are they. They're both right in a little way. These guys are right because they're saying they're, they're exaggerating and they're making up stuff. These guys are right because they took a fact, they exaggerated it, and they made up stuff in order to convince these guys to spend more money. Science, in between, has to get money from both sides in order to do the research. So what are they going to do? 
If they're getting it from this side, then they're going to construe the facts so that the person over here gets the results they want. If they're getting money from this side, they're going to construe the facts so that they get money from them, if they pay out money, which they don't, but try to get money from them to make it sound as though there is no such a thing. And then somewhere in between, some people want to get fame and fortune out of it and want to become famous for tearing out both sides and blame each other for the problems that boil down to our issue and yours. Because we have Google. We have Google. I just love to tell people that, hey, you don't believe me? Google it. You don't believe me? Check it out. Check my sources. Go to Alaska and find out what's happening with all the statements that are being made. Don't use the words global warming, you know, for God's sakes, because then you're going to get screwed up and confused. But look at climate changes. Look at climate observations. Look at the differences between the mean temperatures or the way that different areas in the world have changed over the years. You can do your own research. It's pretty easy. With Google, it's kind of fun because then you learn all kinds of interesting facts. You can use, if you want to, some things in some sites like Discovery Channel or something, but let me say this, prophecy sites, science sites, all these different blogs that you think are you know, fact-based sites, they're all paid to tell you something. They are all receiving monies to present information, but they'll only present part of it. You've got to do more than go to one site, and you've got to do more than just believe one person. Because if you're smart, you're going to realize both sides are trying to influence you and persuade you into something that might not be true because they may be abusing the news. So please recognize that global warming exists, not to the degree that either side denies it or says it exists, but it does occur. It is happening to us. It is happening on this world. It is a normal process of living in this life. God does not worry so much about global warming. As a matter of fact, I want to give you a, a last closing thought so that you can think about this when it comes to earthquakes, floods, disasters, and worries, and all these anxieties that come upon people when they talk about global warming and they get all freaked out about it. In the Bible, it records when the continents divided. Did you know that? It says that there was one landmass and that they split apart. It literally says in the Bible that the continents split apart. It gives one line for it, and it says, Peleg, I think it was, or I can't remember what his name was, Peleg, lived at the time the continents divided. Split up. Went different directions. I believe it's in Leviticus. Uh, no. It might be in Numbers. It's either in Leviticus or Numbers, if I remember right. But you can look it up. When did the continents divide? Just say, when did the continents divide? And they'll give you the scripture for it. You can Google it. God only gave one little line for the continents dividing. Think about this. What happened to the people that were living on the continents when they split apart? God didn't worry about it. and didn't say much about it, did he? Wow. They drifted apart to where they are, I would assume, today. I hope so. Did it suddenly, did we have a, you know, like they say the Mayan calendar is going to happen, you know, this year in 2012. Did the axis tilt? <laughs> Maybe. Didn't say. Since it doesn't say, I'm not going to say it did. It only says, and God only cared about one thing, the continent split. So if it wasn't that big a deal to God, I don't think global warming is that big a deal to you and I. Don't deny it exists, because it does, and you're just telling people that live in the countries that global warming affects, that they're looking at you like you're stupid and they're not going to believe anything you have to say because you don't know what you're talking about. But when you live in those countries or if you accept the fact that there is some global warming on, then you'll begin to examine the facts and say, okay, but it's not that bad. And everyone else will go, you're right. Because you'll have an answer for both sides that are at opposite extremes and are uber, ultra, at each other because neither one is going to give an inch in order to save a mile. But you are not so. Because you have a God who's revealing to you the truth. Because Jesus said that if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who abradeth not, but giveth to all men liberally. You ask God, bluntly, straight up, is the world going through 
global changes. and he's going to say to you of course it is read matthew twenty four.